You're listening to the Loving Your Own Soul podcast, and I'm your host, Britt Olson. Guided by my own intuition, my intention is to deliver genuine conversations centered around health and wellness, spirituality, self-expression, and culture. In this space, I will provide you with real-life stories, theories, and inspiring perspectives to help you uncover and tap into your own true potential. I'm so grateful you've chosen to tune in with me on this mindful exploration to living a more fluid life through a deeper connection to the soul. Now let's dive into today's journey. Hello, hello. I hope everyone is doing so well today. Thank you so much for tuning in here. I'm Britt Olson, your podcast host and holistic wellness coach. And today is such a fun conversation, but before we get into today's conversation, I have to tell you, it feels a little bittersweet being back on the microphone as if you're a kind of a, um, what is the word that I am looking for? I can't think of it. I apologize. However, anyway, regardless though, if you follow along consistently, if you're a weekly listener, you will notice that I have been a little bit off schedule. We had a break in between some of the episodes and things, and I don't want to get into those details today because I don't want to just, you know, shift the energy of today's episode because today I'm so excited to bring Kara West on here as you all are going to love her and her energy. And I'm actually going to be talking this week on Thursday and Thursday's episode, giving everyone a little bit of an update, just some real talk as to some pretty big life events that took place in the last couple weeks for me and that have really just caused me to take a shift, take a pause. And yeah, we will we will get into all of that later this week. Like I said, I just don't want to stifle the beautiful energy of Kara's episode today because it is so incredible. But I did just want to make note that yes, I am about kind of had a week off this last week. I had a weekly digest that came out talking all about the chakra system. This was an episode I had recorded a little while ago, so it felt good to put it out there. But I also, you know, I try to be as authentic and transparent with all of you as it feels appropriate in my own journey because I'm still still my own individual on my own journey. And, you know, it's always important to honor ourselves, but there are certain experiences that we go through that I feel need to be shared. So yeah, stay tuned for that. But yes, I, it's so funny. I'm like, I'm back, (laughs) which some of you might be like, what are you talking about? But regardless, today we have a really fun and soulful conversation filled with just so much laughter and just beautiful energy. So Kara West, if you're not already familiar with her, you will want to be. She's incredible. She is also known as the Great Full Girl on Instagram, her website, YouTube, TikTok as well, I believe. And Kara is a vegan food blogger, a recipe developer, ethical traveler, social justice advocate, and a lover of all things spirituality. So naturally, the two of us got along just great. I'm so, so thankful for just this new new friendship with Kara. I was actually introduced to Kara through one of my good friends who's also located down in Austin, Texas, Taylor Turner, which shout out to Taylor and her podcast, Healing in Hindsight. If you've not listened, highly recommend. I was also featured, I think it's the first episode of her season three that she's got going on right now. So go check out another Austin girl, Taylor Turner, Healing in Hindsight. It's a phenomenal show. With that, you know, I'm just, yeah, I just feel so grateful. There's so many incredible people in in this world, doing great things. Taylor's one of them. Kara West is certainly one of them. She is just really, she is just going for it. And her name, The Grateful Girl, it really just says it all about her energy. She's incredible. I know you all are going to love her. And this conversation today, we really get into all things veganism, living a conscious life, 
travel, inclusivity, so much more. There's so many good tips for those looking to even attempt veganism or at least start living more consciously in your lives. And yeah, it's such a fun episode. We also talk a little bit about astrocartography. So if you are not familiar with astrocartography, highly recommend after this episode, you head back to our previous episode with Alyssa Lauren, who is an astrocartographer, and will tell you all about the geography of astrology. So I just love the connection and just kind of symbolism that naturally flowed through with my conversation with Kara. Definitely not a coincidence by any means. And before we jump into today's episode with Kara, I did want to briefly just touch on my April giveaway, which is still going on. So due to some of the recent events in my life, I decided to extend this giveaway by a week. So it will now officially close this coming Friday, May 7th with the winner announced this Saturday, May 8th. And as we are celebrating a full year of the podcast, I'm giving away a huge gift box filled with 11 of my favorite wellness tools. In this gift box, I've got the Work Your Light Oracle Deck by Rebecca Campbell, products from Hum Nutrition, Hue Kitchen, Ecoa Fruit Bars, Tea Bella Teas, some Palo Santo, Pura Vita Bracelets, basic girl bath scrubs, so many fun things, even one of Gabby Bernstein's journals. And yeah, it's a huge gift box. And it's really just my way of saying thank you to all of you for continuing to support me in this journey. And I also just love giving gifts. So doing these giveaways is honestly something that just fills me up so much. But if you feel called to this gift box and are inspired to leave a rating and review of the podcast, all you have to do to enter is simply subscribe, rate and review the show over on Apple Podcast. Do be sure to screenshot your review for proof and then DM it to me on Instagram at lovingyourownsoul and I will enter you into the giveaway. Plus, if you share your favorite episode or conversation like today's with Kara, I will give you an extra entry as well. And like I said, the winner will be drawn and announced on this Saturday, May 8th. So you have just a few more days to enter and I highly recommend it. I would equally be so grateful and yeah, I just love connecting and meeting more of you. This podcast is truly just something that comes comes from the heart. It is such a passion of mine. And speaking of passions, we will actually go ahead and jump right into today's wonderful conversation with Kara West. Kara, welcome to the podcast. I'm so excited to have you on here and get to know you a little bit better today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) So we are recording here on the first day of spring, the spring equinox, airy season. And I would love to know just how are you? Are you feeling the changing of seasons and everything right now? Yes, I definitely am. I think it's such a weird moment because, you know, this marks really a full year that we've been in the coronavirus yeah. pandemic, but it's it's also like very beautiful as well too, because it's, it's really being able to see where we were one year ago to all the change that's happened. And while we're still pretty much in the thick of it, like we're on this upward trajectory, I feel like. Um, so it feels like a really good energy. It's so different from what we experienced last year around this time. <laughs> so different. I feel too, just even like the grass looks greener, the air feels fresher. Like you can just feel that like hopeful energy. It's so nice yes, right now. Absolutely. Yeah, I love it. Well, I'm so excited to chat with you. So I personally follow a plant based lifestyle myself, and I am a huge advocate for those who are fully vegan, the vegan lifestyle. I just feel there are so many benefits to us individually, collectively for the greater good. So yeah, this is going to be a fun conversation, but (laughs) to kind of kick things off, I would love to understand kind of that evolution that got you to where you sit today and maybe what it first looked like when you first started kind of entering the vegan lifestyle. 
Yeah. I always think it's so funny because if someone would have told me five years ago, like you will be vegan and you will be basing your entire career off of being vegan, I would have thought this person was insane because I really never considered veganism. I thought it was a very extreme way to live, but it actually started for health reasons. I stumbled across the What the Health documentary Mm, on Netflix. So good. (laughs) So good. And it just really opened my mind. Like, it's just one of those things like you're so conditioned to like never question like where your food comes from and like the process of it all even if it's not dealing with animals just like even our plants like what what is the process from you know farm to table like what does this look like and I never really questioned that until I saw the documentary and once I saw that documentary it opened up my mind to wanting to know more and so I started getting more interested in how animal agriculture affects our climate and our environment And that's what really led me to more of the ethical reasons for going vegan. And I think that that's why I've been able to stay vegan because when I first learned about being plant-based and veganism, it was really for health reasons. And funny enough, I always feel like we don't always make the best decisions when it comes to like being better for ourselves. But when we put (laughs) other people in mind, like we're thinking about the planet and, you know, making sure to put the animals first, like it's way more easier to stay vegan. It's kind of like when someone quits smoking for themselves sometimes they're not always like constant about it but you know if their family members are saying I care about you and I want you to stop smoking like I want you to you know be in my life and it's easier for them to say okay like I'm doing this for someone else and so once I actually found out what happened in the egg and the dairy industry it was very very black and white for me to go vegan but I had been pescatarian vegetarian for six to nine months before that so I do always try to advocate for people to take the slow and steady journey and like go at your own pace because I don't think that I would have been able to be successful had I not had that transition period of that six to nine months because I feel personally for me the food was the easiest part but what wasn't easy was just having these social dynamics around friends and family and just really trying to understand how to navigate that Um, and also like your own kind of guilt around learning all of these all these things. And you almost feel like, how could I have been a part of this? How could I have contributed to this suffering to animals, to the earth, to my body, you know, so you almost kind of go into this like depression state for a minute. It's just all about giving yourself that grace and space to, to learn because as you continue to learn, you'll start implementing new practices along the way. And I think sometimes people can feel that doing this overnight can be very overwhelming. So I'm always an advocate for just taking it step by step, day by day at your own pace. (laughs) Absolutely. How was that for you? Kind of that initial just shifting everything over. I know you mentioned the grief and kind of the depression, which I totally get that so much, but did, was it something that kind of felt like you stepped into it naturally or did you kind of have to like work at it a little bit at first? No, I think so. I am a Gemini sun. So I'm Mm. all about like consuming information almost to the part where it becomes like obsessive. So like when I consume information, I'm like, okay, I'm going to know everything. about. Give me all of it. (laughs) Yeah, Give me it all. So that's pretty much what I did. Like once I learned about more of like the health benefits of veganism, I thought, well, I wonder what else like veganism can do. And that's what led me down the rabbit hole of environmentalism. And then I found out ethically, like what happened to the animals. And I just was like voracious and consuming all of this information. So it happened really naturally, but I definitely think that it was, it almost felt like the spiritual awakening of just like, oh my gosh, like what is happening in the world? And like, how can I make this better? And yeah, it it was such an incredible like time in my life that it's so hard to explain, but it really does feel like an awakening when you're, you're learning all of this information and you're starting to understand, like you're taking those rose colored glasses off for the first time. And it can be really tough because yeah, you can kind of go into a little bit of a depressive state. But I think after, you know, being vegan for three years, I've learned how to navigate certain social settings. And also I'm very like altruistic. So I can see like there is a positive future coming. And it's just like, what small steps can we take today to bring about a better tomorrow? Yes. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. I would love to talk (laughs) more on that. But first you mentioned it kind of felt like a spiritual awakening and I totally feel that. It's funny. I kind of feel like I've joked before that it's like yoga is kind of the catalyst to like spirituality, but going vegan and really eating more plants, that's really the catalyst to like your awakening because it just feels like you clean your vessel out. You understand 
the earth and plants. And it's like, you just become one with mother nature again. It's yeah, so cool. Have you seen <laughs> any kind of like synchronicities to your own spiritual journey and just impacts in that realm since going yeah, vegan? Yeah, absolutely. I think what's really interesting, at least with my vegan journey, is that when I actually opened up my heart to, um, I mean, I've always been an animal lover, but I mean, yeah. once I really understood what was happening to animals and to the planet, I just wanted to live by my values of being compassionate. And one of the things I realized in opening up my heart to compassion for animals and to our planet, I also opened up the compassion I had around me for people as well. And, you know, I went vegan right around the time of like, you know, Donald Trump getting elected. And I mean, we all know those past four years has been a very tumultuous time in humanity. You know, and just, it's it's really helped me because I had to navigate how to speak to people compassionately about veganism because I wanted them to feel welcomed. I wanted them to feel like this was an inclusive community. And I think we all have this idea of like the vegan, like the militant vegan in our head. And I just, I didn't want to approach veganism that way. I wanted to approach it in a way that was joyful and that was welcoming and inclusive. And in my conversations with people about veganism, it really helped me kind of navigate this really tumultuous time that we've been in with so many different opinions and very extreme opinions and like how to stay compassionate and understand like, well, why do they think that way? Like, you know, and, and just knowing that everybody's on their own path. And so that's honestly one of the biggest impacts I feel that it's had on me spiritually has been not just extending that compassion to animals, but also being compassionate to other people. I love that so much. I feel that (laughs) deeply. And speaking of that, so I know your brand and people might know you on Instagram or YouTube or with your blog as The Grateful Girl, which is great, G-R-E-A-T, full F-U-L-L. And I love this name so much, but I would love to know kind of the background as to how you developed your name, your brand, and what it kind of means to you. Yeah, this is such an interesting story. And so I actually did not come up with the name (laughs) at all. It actually just came to me because I was really close with my grandmother. She passed away from cancer in 2007. And she's always been just, I can always feel her presence around me through, you know, this, this life here on earth. And I had this dream right before I went vegan. And I was trying to figure out what to do with my blog. It just, I didn't see like I had any meaning behind it because I was, I was doing food blogging before I was vegan, just showing all the amazing places you can eat in Austin that are, you know, deep fried and doused in powdered sugar. (laughs) But I didn't, I felt like there wasn't any intention behind it. It was just kind of, I wanted to be seen, but I really wanted to have some purpose behind what I was doing. And I had this dream right before I turned 26. It was literally the night of my 26th birthday. And she came to me and she said, call it the grateful girl. And I almost saw like the letters, like how to spell it out. And I thought, yeah, that's what life is supposed to be about. It's about living a great full life and empowering people to live by their own morals and values, empowering people to live life based on their wildest dreams, that this world is more abundant than it is about scarcity. I think so many of us live in this idea of scarcity, but the world is so abundant because we all don't want the same things. (laughs) So there's so much abundance to go around for everyone. Yeah. So that's really where it came about. So it was like, not only is it just about like eating to your heart's content and eating amazing (laughs) vegan food, but also to incorporate that as living a grateful life of abundance. Wow. I got like (laughs) full body chills when you were explaining that. I love that so much. So meaningful too. I mean, Oh, that's beautiful. I love it. And you (laughs) also have just such a radiating energy about you. I don't know if it contributes. I think it contributes wholeheartedly to who you are, your lifestyle, everything. Like you just glow. So you can just feel... You can feel all of it. That's so fun. Oh, thank you so much. I love <laughs> that it. means a lot. For anyone listening who has maybe been thinking about going vegan or even just adapting a more conscious lifestyle kind of full round, do you have any tips or tricks or even if somebody's feeling, I don't know, maybe a little intimidated as well to it all? Yeah, definitely. I mean, there is so much to know. Oh, and I think, I think what it is, is like, at least from my experience, when I was consuming all of this information, I realized how much of just all of this was interconnected, you know, the oppression of animals, the oppression of people, climate change, like this, they're all connected. And you almost feel a little powerless of like, well, 
what do I do? Because there's so many issues. <laughs> like, how do I pick just one? And yeah, so it can feel really overwhelming. And so I really just try to advocate for people to do what works best for you. And that's going to look different for everybody. And everybody's in a different situation. For myself, I was, it was me and my partner who's now my husband, but you know, it was just us. And like, I can't imagine for people who are deciding to go vegan and they also have their family and they're non-vegan. So their journeys will look very different to someone who is maybe just themselves or maybe just themselves and a partner. So it really depends too on like even your schedules. Sometimes people don't have the time to do the meal prepping and the cooking and things like that. And so they rely heavily on convenient foods, which aren't always the healthiest foods. And they also can be quite expensive. So to me, I always feel like don't overwhelm yourself. <laughs> Pick like what is the lowest hanging fruit for you to do because that will just become a ripple effect. So if it's, hey, I can only be vegan at breakfast and lunch right now, but because I have my family and I, I just cannot cook two different dinners, <laughs> like I have to do dinner, you know, as both options, then do that, you know, until you can transition and you do have more time, you know? So to me, I feel like it's better better to do something than to not do anything at all. And so, yeah, just taking it one day at a time, one step at a time that works for you, maybe not necessarily for it works for everybody else, but just knowing that you have to give yourself that grace and space to be able to experiment and learn what works best for you and your schedule. I love that. That's so helpful because it can be overwhelming too when we have such busy schedules. And again, we really don't want to try to go for those processed foods because they're really not good for us and they are more yeah. expensive. It always kind of like, kills my heart a little bit when somebody is like, oh, but eating fruits and vegetables is so expensive. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's all the yeah. packaged food that adds up. Like it's actually really affordable. So. Yeah, absolutely. I can always tell the difference when I'm eating more like whole foods, plant-based and I go to the grocery store and I'm like, I really only spent that much. Yeah. <laughs> Versus when I'm like, let me get some diet cheese. Let me get some, some ice some cream. <laughs> All the things. Then, then my bill definitely adds up. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wait, actually speaking of ice cream, I think you posted it recently, a vegan ice cream bread. Is that oh, right? Yes. Oh, so good. <laughs> that looked amazing. I love that too with your recipes is that you really incorporate so many styles of food and kind of hitting on those like I'll say comfort foods for lack of a better word, but just like mm -hmm. meals. Because I have a lot of people who are like, oh my gosh, like you eat mac and cheese and I'm like vegan mac and cheese is one of my favorite foods. Like I would eat it all the time. Yeah. I always try to incorporate, like when I'm thinking about doing recipes, I'm always trying to incorporate number one, like how accessible is the food? Number two, how much time does it take to cook this food? Because I think a, a huge barrier for people is time, not maybe as much now because so many people work remotely, but totally before like time is so important. So I'm always trying to think of that. And also like, I always try to keep in mind when I'm making recipes that my, my ideal audience is someone who is the beginner, who is starting veganism. And I think that when you think of vegan, you think, oh, I have to eat like kale and quinoa. And you're like, no, like you can, yeah. <laughs> you can also eat other things. So it's all, I'm, I'm always trying to think about like, what are those comfort foods that people are used to having that they can have as vegan. And that will open up their mind to exploring more different types of foods that are vegan. Like even for me, I barely ate like sweet potatoes and beets. And like, now these are some of the things that I love the most, but I wouldn't have ever, <laughs> ever eat them if I wasn't vegan. So it just, I want to help to expand their, their mind about all the other foods that they can eat by first bringing them in. Here's a comfort meal that is so recognizable and familiar to you. <laughs> like there's nothing to be scared about. <laughs> totally. I love that so much. So now is your partner, he's vegan as well. Yeah, he is. He went vegan probably two, three months after I did. Okay, cool. So almost immediately. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It was him bringing an in and out burger in the bed and me crying. And I was like, don't bring that in the bed. And he was like, okay, I'm just going to go vegan now. It's, it's yeah. too much. So funny. You mentioned <laughs> earlier when you were kind of starting out and I'm sure same for him too, the kind of the social aspect was difficult around it, whether it be friends and family. What about that 
was so difficult, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, absolutely. I think for me, friends was actually quite easy, but I think for a lot of people, it really shows them who their friends are because as you transition, like there's so much that we do that's based around food, you know, like food is the center point, is the, is the focal point of all of our gatherings. And so, you know, when you're used to hanging out with your friends over, you know, tacos and queso and, <laughs> you know, it can look very different when you kind of like, hey, like I can't eat any of those things. And so it can be a a little like it can be a bit of a shock to them, you know, but I was very fortunate that all of my friends were extremely supportive. They always made sure like we were going somewhere that there was something vegan on the menu or if, you know, I was coming over to their house or making a vegan option. So I was really, really blessed in that regard. And I think it's, it's harder with family. Cause like you can pick your friends, but you can't pick your family. And so it was, it was harder for family because especially for like my husband, you know, he grew up in the South on, you know, brisket and barbecue and like all these oh things. My so gosh, his family especially is like, in Texas too. <laughs> yes. So his family's kind of like, I don't get it. Like, <laughs> don't you feel like you're missing something, but he's very, very health conscious. So it was very easy for him to make this choice. And for me, at least with my family, I think the hardest thing has been my parents because when you make this transition, sometimes your parents can feel that, you know, you are judging them based on how they raised you and the choices they made for you for your food. And so I think for a while, my mom really felt like I was judging her, criticizing her for the way she raised me. And it took a very long conversation for us to get to <laughs> the point of me telling her that I was not criticizing her, but rather living by the morals and values that she raised me on to be compassionate and to be kind. And once we, once she realized that it was much easier for her to accept that this was the choice I was making. And I think at the time she was also like, this is just a trend. It's a fad. Like you're going to grow out of this. And so now it's very different because she sees so much of the success that I've had in this. And so she's like, okay, maybe there's something here. <laughs> But yeah, to me, it was definitely that. And, and, you know, just dealing with jokes, you know, when you go to family dinners and stuff like that mm -hmm. and holidays and, but yeah, you just learn how to navigate it over time and it looks different for everybody. And I feel like you learn to stand up for yourself when maybe there's an offensive joke that's made, or, um, you also set boundaries with certain family members. Um, for us, for Thanksgiving, this was the first year where I said, you know, I think what we'd like to do is just come for dessert. You know, like they always have the turkey on the table. And for me, that's very uncomfortable. And I decided, you know, I'm going to put this boundary up and just come for dessert and we'll still be there for the festivities. And that's just going to look different for everybody. But yeah, it's definitely a difficult, difficult thing to navigate when you first become vegan. But I do think it's actually getting better because as we've seen this past year in 2020, we had so much um, disruption in our food supply and a lot of people starting to choose a more compassionate option, whether that was intentional or what was left grocery store <laughs> and then also too with everyone just kind of focusing more on health and how to get their immunity up they started to realize that food actually plays a huge factor in you know your immunity and just overall health of your body and so yeah I think that there's been this huge shift of people who are starting to realize like wow like health is really <laughs> something that we should be focused on now Completely. I love seeing the shift. It's like frustrating a little bit, mostly just I hold compassion for those who, you know, maybe haven't quite woken up yet or have some things kind of clouding them along the way. You know, everyone's journey is so, so different. Oh, but yeah. at the same time, witnessing more people just waking up and understanding how important our diet and our health is. And I don't like to use the word diet, but the food we consume, it's just, it's so cool to see. And yeah, whether you were kind of like pushed into it, but <laughs> either way it's happening and it's so fun. It's exciting. It's yeah, an exciting time. I think I think a lot of people too are kind of getting back to their roots. I've seen a lot of people interested in like planting and, you know, plant mamas and plant dads yes. <laughs> and uh, gardening. And I think a lot of people are starting to wake up and just kind of question like wh how disconnected we've been, you know, and it's kind of interesting because Joaquin Phoenix made this amazing Oscar speech about being disconnected from the natural world. And then it was like, oh God, like the start of like what happened. <laughs> so I don't know if he knew something before, but um, yeah, it does. It does feel like that. It does feel like people are waking up and starting to get back to their roots and just understanding like we only have this one planet and how can we, you know, make changes for, we only have this one planet, we only have this one body. So it's like, how can we make changes, you know, to better ourselves and to better the planet? Absolutely. And like you said, getting back to our roots is so crucial because I resonate with that so deeply. It definitely feels like it's our most 
natural state of being. And if you really look back and look back and look back, like this is how we ate before technology and shifts and just yeah all the things. But I feel <laughs> that too with like plants because, you know, it's the quote unquote trend of the house plants, but really it's just that's what we crave. Again, that's mm-hmm. like our naturalness. Those are our roots. So yeah, so fun. One thing that I did want to touch on with you, because I know you guys travel a lot, obviously kind of pre 2020 ish, but I think we took <laughs> some trips last year too, though. Is that Yeah. Right? Yeah, we did. We did. Yeah. Luckily we were able to take some socially distanced. <laughs> so trips. fun. And are you guys building out a van right now? Oh we gosh. are. The van is in the shop right now and right. hopefully we'll be able to pick it up next week. And I've actually got like so many Amazon orders coming to me so we can actually outfit the van and, and with everything that we need for our travels. <laughs> oh my gosh. Exciting. I would love to know, obviously kind of the last like couple years, I'm sure it's been so much easier, but just being vegan and traveling, like what how has that been, I guess? And how is that journey? Are there certain things that you kind of have to be more proactive and more aware of when it comes to travel planning? Yeah, definitely. I think there's a lot more planning that goes into it when we are traveling. It's kind of funny. I feel like we've picked the places that we'd like to travel based on how good the vegan food will be when we get there. (laughs) I feel that food is so important. Like food is the best. It is. And it's just like, I always have loved to travel. And I've always been like, I always loved to watch the travel channel as a kid. And I think what I thought was really cool about food and travel is that, you know, food is how you get to know the, someone's culture and their heritage. And, you know, it's almost like this, you know, unspoken language almost <laughs> and getting to understand and really immerse yourself in a culture. And one of the things I've found is while, yes, you have to do a little bit more planning as far as your travels, you also get to experience the local experience better because you're typically not going to like the tourist spots of town because they don't tend to cater to vegan options. And so you're almost finding yourself going out to the city more, you know, being around more the locals. And I have had such a more immersive experience in cities being vegan than ever before, because I would just stay in the tourist section of the town. And now like we go all over, we recently went to um, Las Vegas a couple years ago and it it was the first time I've ever been off the strip. And I was like, man, Las Vegas is so cool. (laughs) And I had never experienced that. It was just always like just stay on the strip, you know, eat on the strip. And this was really the first time we got to see the city and yeah. And I've absolutely loved it. And I went to Berlin before everything happened with coronavirus, but it was an incredibly vegan friendly city. And it was really cool because what I do on my trips is I always try to join the local Facebook group of vegans. And so I'll ask, Hey, like what's the best place to go eat? And you find so many gems that way. And you get to connect with the local vegan community. And even sometimes there's meetups. And so it's just really cool. I've loved it. And I just want to empower people that, you know, they can still go on vacation and be compassionate and travel and and still have fun. That's so cool. What a good tip about the Facebook groups. I never thought of that before. Yeah. Oh yeah. You'll find some amazing gems in there. If you're like, Hey, what what should I go have brunch? You know, (laughs) totally. As humans, we want to naturally grow and to experience change. However, it's the fear of taking conscious action on these wants that keeps us stuck, keeping us unconsciously attached to an imbalanced life, attached to the habits and comfort that pain, suffering, fear, resentment, and limitations of our current realities provide to us. Whereas in reality, our true home, our real home, resides in a world of balance, a world we are aware of yet also free of anything that no longer serves us. For balance is the key to life. Balance is the aim of all living creatures. We are all alive and living right now in this moment. Our earth is also alive. Our beautiful earth is mostly made up of water. And we too, as human beings, are made up primarily of water. Wherever there is water, there is life. And just as water must be kept in balance here on earth, we as human beings must also be kept in balance. After much discovery and witness to life's experiences, I created Ambu, a modern holistic wellness company 
Ambu is a company designed to truly realign you on a mind, body, and soul level. Through my holistic wellness practice, my intention is to guide you to a more rightful and truthful way of living. A simple guide that complements and enhances where you are right now. Real change happens from within and is the key to not only transforming yourself, but your experience of the world around you. Together, I will work with you to uncover your why, adopt sustainable practices for long-lasting lifestyles, and expand to your fullest potential. Our lives, and especially the world of health and wellness, has gotten far too complicated over the years. Through my work with Ambu, I strip it all back to the beginning of time, back to the basics, in order to bring you full circle, not to a new self, but back to the essence of yourself, your one and only authentic self. Ambu offers a variety of programs and resources, each built with intention to target how unique we all truly are. All in all, a life well lived is a life that you are able to enjoy. It's time to rediscover your inner calling, your healthiest and brightest you that's been waiting inside of you for all this time. It's time to dust him or her off, and I'd love for Ambu to serve as your guide and accountability partner in this journey. So let's guide you back home to a life in balance through our modern holistic approach to wellness. To learn more, visit us at ambuwellness.com or connect with us on Instagram at ambuwellness and let's transform together. Not to play favorites necessarily, but are there any particular cities or locations that have kind of made the biggest impact on you as it pertains to vegan food? Yeah, it's kind of interesting, actually. So I'm very big into astrology, mm-hmm. and I've done this study of astrocartography, <gasps> and it's basically... It's okay, oh my gosh, you know. I'm obsessed, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so for those who don't know, it's, it's basically like the geography of astrology and like where you can find the best energies, or maybe you might have the more challenging energies. And so... Wait, this is so funny. I was just thinking, I have, I just interviewed an astrocartographer next week, oh, and I think awesome. that her... Her episode comes out the week before yours, if I have it correct, or vice oh, this versa. Is perfect. So perfect, so aligned. <laughs> I love it. So yes, I didn't know this before going to these places, but these two places are actually where I have the best energy in the world. So one was Berlin. If I could move to Berlin, I totally would. Extremely vegan friendly. I mean, anything and everything you can find there. And it's such a cool international hub. So there's so many different types of food. Like I had Jamaican food. I had Thai Mm. food. I had Indian food. I mean, everything was just spectacular. And then we also went to Hawaii last year before the pandemic happened. And we went to the island of Oahu. And I thought we were just going to be eating acai bowls the whole time. (laughs) I was pleasantly surprised to see that there were so many vegan options there. And I think a lot of people who are also there too tend to be a little bit more like spiritual and like, you know, they're just like more in tune with like the earth and just really, um, you know, they have that appreciation. Yeah. And so we had so many great meals there. We cannot wait to go back. And it's funny enough, actually, it's where my husband proposed to me, but it's also where he has his Venus line, his like MC line, <laughs> all these amazing yeah. energies that are there as well as my own. So Hawaii is like an extremely special place for us. So we can't wait to go back. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love that so much. In being that you're into astrocartography, do you plan your trips in relation with some of your lines now? Yeah, totally. We've actually, we've been actually trying to plan a lot of our trips in relation to that. Hopefully for my birthday, I would love to go to Sedona. I've got a really like beautiful (laughs) line that goes through there. I think it's my moon line and my Mercury line. So I've been wanting to go there so bad. So the only thing is my birthday's in the summer and I'm like, I don't know if I want to feel away. (laughs) Could um, always, just an idea, you could always go for your half birthday. Yes, yes. I was like, I have to go to Sedona at some point this year, though. But yeah, it has been really cool to just see where in the world, like you have these really amazing energies. And hopefully once the world opens up, our big, big trip we want to do is Japan. (laughs) Yes. Have you ever been to Japan before? No, but I was obsessed with as a kid, like I was into anime. Yes. I was like, I've always wanted to go to Japan. We were actually planning, me and some of my friends were actually planning to go this year, but obviously that'll have to wait. But I can't wait. That's going to be 
be my big, big trip when everything opens up. <laughs> it's incredible. I've actually been fortunate enough to go twice now. And oh. I've always been just obsessed with Asia, all of Asia in particular, but Japan has always been a big one for me as well. Oh, and it is my gosh. such an incredible country. I mean, hands down, one of my favorites. So you're gonna you're just gonna fall in love with it you're gonna were you were you plant-based when you went to Japan I was teetering back and forth okay so seafood was my big I love raw fish and everything like that that's still like really hard (laughs) I also have a lot of just like mermaid energy spiritually and things like that so I'm just really connected to the ocean so compassionately it kind of helps me flip that switch but I really do love it so I was kind of like teetering back and forth but they definitely do have a lot of options though okay that's what I was gonna ask if like they had good vegan options and just vegetarian options in general there yes yeah definitely yeah you'll be you'll be totally fine (laughs) lots of vegetables and rice and seaweeds and all the things oh I'm there (laughs) oh my gosh you're gonna have so much fun I love it well I'm a huge traveler fan myself traveling is just like It's so much fun. But for me, I'd love to know kind of your opinion on this because I fully believe that travel is just, and maybe it's not even traveling, you know, to these big locations. It might even just be exploring a new area of the town that you live in. But I feel that it is so important for your mental health, your overall well being, your brain, just all the things. And I would love to know if you kind of carry similar values or what you think traveling brings to your life additionally. Yeah, definitely. I remember this quote as a kid and it was, uh, don't tell me what you know, tell me where you've been. And Mm. I think that that's so true. Like if travel is just such a spiritual experience, no matter where where you are, like you said, it doesn't have to be anywhere like big or, you know, (laughs) like overseas or anything like that. But what it does to me is like, we all get into these loops and these routines and it just allows us to get outside of our comfort zone and experience a new culture experience, you know, even if it's just a different state or a different city, like they're all so different, you know, and it also just teaches you about yourself because travel is not always easy. (laughs) You know, sometimes you may come up against, you know, a flight delay or, you know, lost luggage or, you know, there's all types of things. And it's just kind of, you know, these are the things that life will throw at you. And how do you navigate them? How do you make the best out of it? You know, it's like, are you going to be upset that you lost your luggage? Or are you just going to go to the to the gift shop and rock that I love San Francisco tea and like just go for it and have a good time anyway, you know? So there's always going to be things that travel throws at you and will show you more about who you are. And honestly, sometimes even in the most beautiful locations was I met with some of my like most shadow work mm-hmm. because it was like, I took myself to these beautiful locations, specifically when I went to Paris and to the South of France. And I thought, oh, like, this is, this is what happiness should be, you know? And I was there and I was still sad. And I realized like, it doesn't matter where you go. Like those problems will always follow you. So every city has taught me something about myself. Um, Maybe I wasn't able to do that introspection at home. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. It's so funny. I actually just recorded a solo episode like two months ago about how a location really cannot determine your happiness because yes, wherever you go, there you are, I think is the quote. I don't remember Mm -hmm. who says that quote, but yeah, it's so true. And I think it's interesting to kind of also getting out of that comfort zone, especially being in another country and out of those like habitual patterns of, oh, or, you know, maybe before 2020, you would wake up and you'd go to Starbucks and you'd go to work and you were just on autopilot compared to Mm -hmm. walking into another country. And it's like, okay, I have to find what I can eat here. How do I order it? How do I pay for it? How do I find it? Did I get on the wrong train? Like, and it can definitely be overwhelming because it kind of takes you out of that. But if you lean into it, it can also be really fun and just explore. Yeah, definitely. It was so interesting because my mom actually came with me when I went to Berlin for my job training. And I kept trying to tell her like, just get on the train, use a train. Like, (laughs) I was like, don't take an Uber. Like, get on the train, you know? And yeah. she was so nervous. She's like, Aww. I don't know. And I was like, the train system is so efficient. Like the German train systems are very efficient. And it, she was so happy when I came back from work that day. And she was like, I did it. I went through the, I went to all the places I wanted to see. I got on the train and, you know, I was just like, and I could see like that confidence 
just like coming out of her. So it's just like, you know, that every, everything you do when you're traveling, it does have an effect on you. And it just, it just broadens like who you are as a person and just makes you so much more (laughs) well-rounded. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So much. And it's kind of that like make more firsts philosophy, you know, Mm -hmm. get out of it just like your mom and like that confidence and like she impressed herself and yeah (laughs) it's so good for your natural state of being 100 percent. oh yeah oh my gosh so fun I love it do you have any trips planned coming up yeah so once we get the van back we're going to be doing some small trips um, in Texas and one of the things that I've been wanting to do a lot of is just really domestic travel because so many people want to travel but I think we're still going to be like a little wary about (laughs) you know going too far from home just because so many of us have we've been at home for a whole year (laughs) you know, for the most part. So I really think domestic travel is going to be on the rise this year. So I definitely want to showcase a lot of that. And Texas has so many really cool places, like really cool little gems. So we'll be doing a lot of like Texas travel and our big trip in May will actually be to California. So we're hoping to go up and down the coast and uh, just kind of have, I think what's cool about van travel is it allows you to do slow travel as to where I was always like, okay, we got to be here on this day and here on that day. But now it's like, okay, if we want to stop and you know grab something to eat and sleep here we can so just kind of having more of like a flexible schedule I think will also allow us to experience the uh, the city better than just being on this very rigid schedule uh, as I prefer (laughs) to be on a more rigid schedule but I do think this will allow us to have a lot more flexibility so I'm so excited to do this big trip but once again it takes a lot of travel because this is going to be our first big van adventure (laughs) totally absolutely does your husband work remotely is he able like we all both no no yeah not right now he's actually training though to become a personal trainer so he wants to do a lot of like virtual training so yeah so it's coming down the pipeline so we're hoping that if this is something we really enjoy that we'll be in a place in a couple years to just like fully be nomadic (laughs) yes oh my gosh I see that for you guys so much that's exciting (laughs) well one thing that I did also want to chat with you about so we talked a whole bunch about food as it pertains to being vegan and the lifestyle, but in what other ways are you kind of just living that conscious life and just being, you know, conscious about what you consume and kind of just your footprint in this world? Yeah, that's such a great question. And I think this is something that's really coming up in a big way in the vegan community is how to advocate in a way that is intersectional and understanding that all oppression is connected. And so this has been a huge topic recently within the vegan community. And it's definitely something that I've always been very conscious about, but even more so now, because I almost felt kind of put in this box as a vegan of that I could only advocate for animals. And now now I feel really more empowered to not just advocate for animals, but to understand that everything is connected and we can't just fight for one cause and ignore the other. So that's been something that's been very important to me, especially as a woman of color in the vegan community to make sure that I'm speaking out against any and all oppression, any and all injustice. Um, So that's been extremely important. And I think, yeah, when you start to go vegan, you do learn so much about what's happening in all of these different industries and just how much havoc we've done to the earth and how much, you know, chaos that we've created for, you know, marginalized communities and, you know, low income communities of color. And that these people are the people who are impacted the most by climate change and climate change is a direct result of animal agriculture. And, you know, just, you see that it's all connected. And so I really try to do my best. And when I'm working with brands, especially like are these brands kind? Are these brands focused on diversity? Are these brands ethical? Are they sustainable? So it's really important to me that I say, you know, no more than I say yes, because I do want to make sure that I'm working with companies that align with my morals and values and that other people who follow me know that these brands can be trusted, you know, and that they can trust me and know that they don't have to do all the (laughs) background research because it does take a lot of time to do that. So it's just really important that, you know, I'm not just focused on animal advocacy, even though that is like so (laughs) close to my heart, but to also make sure that I'm creating a very safe and inclusive space in my platforms and within the vegan community as well. Mm, I love that. So, so important. And especially just from a level of, 
you know, having an audience and the level of influence and things like that, and knowing that people can trust you and that you're not willing to take on a partnership solely for the money and that what, you know, what you speak is what you preach and that it does go full circle because I think that's so important. I know I've even just kind of looking online, seen, you know, some individuals and I'm like, wait, but is that product a hundred percent? So, because it takes so much research and time. So for you Mm -hmm. to be able, you know, number one, to be dedicated to that, but then to give that back to your community and really just work in all these different realms is so wonderful and so important. Like there's so many different layers to it. It's oh yeah, (laughs) (laughs) Totally. Yeah. No, it's really cool though. I think what's been really awesome about being a content creator and getting into the influencer marketing space is how many amazing companies there are that are doing so many cool things. I think we can kind of become really pessimistic because we see these big brands, Amazon, Target, you know, like kind of see them as like, you know, the capitalism and things like that. But we also have kind of forget that there are so many small players out there making a huge impact collectively. And there are so many brands that are really dedicated to sustainability, making sure they're sourcing their products and services ethically, and they want to give back to the communities. And it's really, really been cool to see. I mean, most of the, most of the brands that approach me are just incredibly kind brands to work with. So I'm really excited that not only do I get to work with them, but just to know that there are so many altruistic people out there (laughs) trying to make a difference. Oh, it's so cool. Such an exciting time. I would love to know where do you, what are kind of your hopes for the future and where would you just like to see things go? Kind of, we'll say like collectively, but then also individually as well. Yeah, I think specifically collectively, I do think that we are, we've been in the trenches the past, you know, few years, I think. But I think that this awakening is happening. And while awakenings can be very, they can be very difficult, they can be very painful, because we're opening our eyes to what has happened, what we've contributed to. We're also looking at how can we change? How can we do things better? And I do see that coming. I, I feel like in the next 10 years, we're going to look back and be like, Ooh, the 20s, you know, that was something. <laughs> but I do feel that we will look back on it and go, that was the turning point for, for us as humans, that we decided that we were going to change the way that we consume, the way we live. So I think that there was so much introspection that happened last year for so many people that people are making these huge changes. I think this is why we're seeing so many people leave their jobs or move or get divorced or, you know, like people oh, are really understanding what their worth is and how, what their purpose is. That was one of the most searched questions was why? And like, what am I here for? What is my purpose? And so I think that so many of us are waking up to understanding that we are these infinite beings and like, we have to be able to experience this human experience that we've been given to the fullest. So that's definitely what I see collectively coming down the pipeline and why I'm so incredibly blessed to be a part of this vegan community and just, you know, that I had this almost awakening before everything happened in 2020, because I do feel like it's going to allow me to become even more successful in this realm. So for me, what I would love to be able to do is I want to create travel retreats for people that are plant-based retreats, but more so I really want to empower women, especially women of color. So my goal is actually to create retreats where people can actually come who are aspiring entrepreneurs and they can actually have a mentor. So kind of coming as a mentee and having a mentor there at the retreat in a more intimate setting where they can ask any questions that they need to, to be able to advance their own business and careers. Because although people may resonate with my message, there are people who will not resonate with me, who will not be able to connect with me. So I really want to just empower other vegan plant-based entrepreneurs so that they can get more products and services out there. And, you know, people can really, you know, they can have even a more ripple effect of people reaching more of a wider audience than I could ever do. So really my goal is to not only be successful myself, but also to give that back to the community and really empower women, especially women of color. I love that so much. Such important, such important work. And I truly believe, you know, that there are no coincidences and especially for yourself as a leader and an advocate to have gone through this earlier. So that way you can now really step into that role as being the guide and working with others and really opening the doors for so many. 
Yeah, it's so interesting because you never know like why something is happening to you or, or, you know, (laughs) or, you know, in the moment you're, you don't understand why it's, why it's happening. And now with everything that's happened in 2020, I'm like, wow, like, oh, am I glad I went vegan before? Especially even just like during the winter storm, it was like, everybody was like, there's no more meat left. And I'm like, well, I'm okay. Oh my gosh. I didn't even think of that. Right. (laughs) They're like, I'm fine. (laughs) (laughs) So I think it's uh, yeah. So I'm just, I'm so grateful for the timeline that I've been given and I'm just trying to figure out how I can be the most effective and the most impactful to allow people to live their best lives. Yeah. So beautiful. Where can people find you to connect with you further and follow your journey? Yes, definitely. So I am most active on Instagram at Grateful Girl. I'm also on TikTok. And then I also have my YouTube channel, which will be documenting all of our van travels. And that's at The Grateful Girl. So fun. I love it. Well, before we start closing out today's episode, I love to close with some loving your own soul questions, which are just some kind of fun on the spot questions. So everyone can get to know you just a little bit deeper. Love it. (laughs) Well, I know that you're a Gemini sun. Do you know your moon and rising sign? Yes. So I am a Virgo rising. So lots of mercurial energy (laughs) and a Pisces moon, which is probably why I'm (laughs) very empathetic and compassionate. (laughs) Yes. Oh my gosh. I love that. What a fun combination. That's cool. (laughs) So fun. Do you know your human design type? No, I don't. This is Mm. so interesting. I know I need to know. (laughs) Are you familiar with human design? Have you heard no, of No, I've never heard of this. Fun. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, so similar to astrology, but it actually combines, it combines five different systems and I'm not an expert in it. So for anyone listening, <laughs> if I botch this, I apologize, but I know it combines astrology, the I Ching, the chakra system, and two other things, the Kabbalah, I believe, and something else I can't think of. Anyway, it's really like a full, you love astrology, so you're going to be obsessed with this, but- <laughs> If you go to, uh, I think it's myhumandesign.com is my favorite okay. website for it. And then same thing, day you were born, time, city, et cetera. You'll be able uh, to find it. I'm, I'm, I'm literally going to do this after. <laughs> there goes the rest of your weekend. <laughs> yeah, so fun. Next question. What are some of your favorite vegan products or recipes? Yeah. So I'm obsessed right now with Osea, which is a vegan skincare company. I have seen such a huge difference in my skin recently and it's all plant-based made of, out of algae products and stuff like that. So ugh, it's, it's incredible. I'm obsessed. <laughs> and so I, is my husband, which is why I'm, I have to hide it from him now. <laughs> I love that you just brought that up. So I'm obsessed with Osea as well. And so oh, I am like a guinea pig and always experimenting. I'll literally find something that works and then I have to like remove it from my life to almost like doubly confirm that it works. And just before we started recording, I was actually on there getting ready to order more because I had taken a break from them for a couple months and like my skin is nowhere near what it was and my eating hasn't changed. So I'm like, it's their skincare is. Yeah. So that was like my little universe telling me like, yes, go check out. You need it again. (laughs) Yes. I absolutely love their skincare. Another brand that I really like is it's a black owned brand called gold. And I love a good like turmeric latte in the morning. Mm. So that has been one of my favorite products to use. Yeah. I mean, I get so many like (laughs) vegan products that I get to try out. There are like so many that I can't even name, but Those are the two for sure that I use like every single day. (laughs) I love that. So fun. What about, do you have a favorite go-to vegan meal or recipe? Oh, that's so hard. I am a sweet tooth though. Like I love, I am a big on brunch and I'm big on sweets. So I'm not like a very savory person, even though I try to make savory dishes for people. But yeah, I mean, my, my go-to though, like my guilty pleasure is a good vegan donut. (laughs) Do you have any favorite spots in Austin for vegan donuts? Yeah. So, uh, Wheatsville is the best. They always have like pretty much all of their donuts that they have. It's a, it's a grocery store. And I mean, they always have like a huge array of vegan donuts and oh, they're so good. I always get like a full dozen when I break out. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Sounds so good. Going to need that tomorrow morning now for Sunday. What was something that you loved to do as a child? Mm, Oh 
my gosh, I love that question. So I would say one of the things I would love to do as a child was I love to use my imagination. I loved to like do plays and stuff like that for my parents, you know? I was really into acting as a kid and it's so funny how like all of these things have kind of helped me along my journey of becoming a content creator and just having this imagination. And I'm really blessed that my parents were able to allow us that space to just imagine, to turn a box into whatever you wanted it to be, or, you know, like, I just love that they gave us that freedom to be very imaginative children. And that's really helped me to be the creative soul that I am today. <laughs> I love that so much. Next question. So this one might seem obvious to some, but I'm curious to know, do you prefer cooking at home or going out to eat? I would probably say going out to eat. I think it's because I cook so much for like content creation. I love to go out to eat and just try new foods. And for me, obviously when I'm traveling, like that's the best part is that I can go out to eat, but I still do enjoy cooking, but yeah, for sure. Going out to eat and pay for myself. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, even just like the atmosphere of restaurants and like their menu, the decor, the food, yes. I mean, all of it. And then, <laughs> you know, someone, I mean, what a luxury. Someone's bringing you food and cleaning up after you. Like, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, I think that's where it comes down talk to. Talk about privilege. <laughs> yeah. It's the cleaning. <laughs> if you had no fear whatsoever, what is one thing that you would do? I didn't have any fear. So I actually have (laughs) claustrophobia really bad. But every time I watch a travel vlog where they're like, we're going to go to this underground cave where there's water. And I'm like, that looks so cool. But oh my God, I would, I would freak out. Like I have this thing about, it's not necessarily being in an enclosed space, but it's about seeing my way out of a space. So that to me would be so cool to do, but it would really push (laughs) my limits <laughs> yeah have to get to like a very superb level of enlightenment to be able to like basically like yeah. breathe your way through that <laughs> yeah I would have like the worst anxiety of like oh my gosh is like the cave gonna collapse I would think the worst <laughs> yeah totally fears are tough I mean things like that like they will they hold a tight grip on you so oh yeah <laughs> I feel that final question that I ask all of my guests When did your exploration to diving deeper into your own soul first begin and how has it evolved since then? Oh, that's such a cool question. So I actually feel like this happened to me very, very early in my life. And I would say like two, three years old where I used to play this game with myself and I would ask myself, who am I? And I would repeat it almost like a mantra until I felt my soul leave my body and like look over me. And I used to think it was the coolest thing. And I was a kid, so I didn't know what what that was, you know, but I was essentially having this like out of body experience. And I don't know if it was like my soul trying to understand like, well, this is your life now. Like this is, (laughs) this is your body, you know? And so, yeah, that was really the first time when I had like this kind of like spiritual (laughs) exploration, like as a kid, but I never knew how to like tell my parents that, you know, like that I could do this. And I would say like after the age of like five, seven, I wasn't able to do that anymore. But my, my grandmother though, she was very spiritual and she would always do these like yoga, like the old school yoga DVDs. <laughs> at home and she would have like yoga and like meditation dvds and i would do them like by myself when i was only like 11 or 12 i thought I it love was so your cool. grandmother wow. <laughs> she was very very spiritual and yeah so i i would just do that as a kid and now today you know i do my journal and my meditation practice and for me it's very important for me to start my day that way it just changes a whole vibrational frequency of you know how my day goes i, I can tell a difference when i don't set that boundary of giving myself time in the morning to do that journalism and do the meditation. <laughs> yes. Oh, aren't they such important practices? I feel like until oh. you really incorporate them, it's very hard to understand the power of what they really give back to you. Yeah, absolutely. It's very, very important for me to start my day like that, especially now that I'm so busy doing content creation, especially I think with social media, giving myself that space in the morning is very important. Yeah. I love that childhood experience. Kids are so cool, but age two to three, I mean, 
Incredible, but it's so telling for, you know, just how we are when we come out of the womb space and what's going on. And it probably, yeah, you were trying to differentiate between like, okay, I guess I'm here as a human now, but I'm not sure how I feel about this. So I'm just going to like go between realms. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it wasn't until recently that I learned that um, with astrology, I have Jupiter is in my 12th house of spirituality. Mm. So it makes sense that like, this is such an abundant place for me is to be spiritual and to be conscious and kind of going back and forth (laughs) between the spirit and the physical realm. (laughs) Totally. And that Pisces moon too, because I know we really embody our moon sign as a child and Pisces super psychic. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. It makes so much sense. (laughs) I love it. Kids are the best. Well, Kara, this was so much fun. I so loved this conversation. It was so fun. Just getting to chat about all the things you're truly such a light and just the work you're doing here in this world. It's just so, so important. So oh, thank, thank you, you so much. This has been so fun to sit down and chat with you. And just like, these are such like meaningful things, you know, to, to, yeah, to living your best life. All right. What an incredible episode. I mean, is Kara not the best? She's so much fun. I love the soul so much. Definitely let us know what you think and highly recommend taking a stab at living a more conscious life if you're not already. Never hurts to try. That's for sure. And with that, do be sure to enter to win my huge wellness gift box that is filled with 11 of my favorite items by simply subscribing, rating, and reviewing the podcast. Plus, you will get a bonus entry if you also share your favorite episode with us on social media. Do be sure to screenshot your proof and send it to me as your entry over on Instagram at lovingyourownsoul. And as always, thank you again for tuning in and being a part of this community. I so look forward to continuing the journey with you again soon.